Hey guys, welcome to another episode. In this episode, we're going to go through and actually test this bad boy out. I also went through a bunch of iterations over the past couple of weeks on the front end, and we changed up the front end a bit. And I was struggling, should I just re-record myself going through that, or should I just go through some of the code and show you what I've done? So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I've done because there is a fair amount of changes that I've made really just to make the front end look a bit more professional and make it look more like a product. So I wanna go ahead and show you, but first let's just recap. So where have we left off? So far we have every single component that we've laid out within this, this document developed. We have a front end, we have a front end that communicates to Etherscan to grab the ABIs of given contract addresses. We have a database layer, which we're using Firebase to be able to store all of the event listeners that folks can set up. And we have a back end. The back end is basically going to read from the database and set up a set up a contract that then listens for the events that are configured in that listener configuration. We're using the Alchemy node service to be able to provide the actual Ethereum virtual machine access so that we can actually listen to the, the Ethereum events. I'd, I'd like to experiment in the future with maybe not using a node service. And I'm going to show you in a second, we are running this on our own node. So I do have a node running. I'm just not connecting to it yet. So I think... I would like to give that a shot because I think if we scale this where we have a lot of people creating contracts to listen to, uh, there are a lot of improvements we need to make and it could it could actually get pretty costly by using a, a node service. We were running a couple of tests on that to see how many requests we would process over time. So what I've done over the past couple of weeks is really just just did an overhaul on the front end and I wanna just make it look a bit more professional. One of the most apparent things was we really needed a way to list out the events that we've configured. So you go through, you create an event listener, and where is it? You can't really see it. So what I did was, if I go to the go to the project here, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the code, which I think I actually have opened already. Yeah, I do. Okay, awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and run our dev environment. Okay, so the first thing what I did was I created a list view. So the list view, if we go to our pages here and we look at this list.js, this list view is going to contain a component that allows us to go out to our database and list out all of the listeners where the user ID is the user that's currently logged in. So we can go ahead and display a list of listeners that that user created. Pretty simple, right? So this is a this is a pretty simple component that's just going to go out there and use the uh, use the client app that we've configured in, in previous episodes. And we're going to go through. And there's a couple of functions here for going out and getting the listeners. So we use the use effect hook here to go out and grab data. And we have some methods here for deleting listeners. I don't yet have the edit listener piece done, so we can think about that whether or not we need to have an edit function or we just delete and recreate. Right, so we could we could play around with that, um, and then we have we have a little bit of a some some logic here to say to check whether or not we have listeners or not. If we don't, we'll we'll display the user with a with a with a display that just says, "Hey, you don't have any listeners. Why don't you create one?" Um, and then this is pretty cool. Cre using Tailwind, um, we created a skeleton loader, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But the skeleton loader is basically going to give you a nice little loading screen as we're waiting for the database to return the listeners to us. And then, quite simply, we just loop through all of the listeners, and then we render them in just a regular table. And that's pretty much it. So that's just, just the list view. Um, now, in order to make this a, a bit more appealing and looking good, we did bring in a couple of more dependencies. You'll see here we are bringing in some icons from the Hero Icons project, which is a really cool project that is part of Tailwind as well. Um, there's a bunch of, there's 292 icons in this set for use, um, and you just bring it in with NPM, so you just bring it in as a, as a dependency. So if we look at our package.json file, you can see here that we have the Hero Icons 
We did bring in the headless UI React. I'll talk about that in a second. And we did bring in React spinners for another preloader that we're going to go into. So those are the only other dependencies that we have brought in. We have our list view and that is that. Now we also wrap the entire application in an application container or like a shell or a Chrome, if you will, right? So we actually bought the Tailwind components, which is a super dope set of components that make it just super quick to be able to set up really clean looking front ends. So we're using one of those here. I created this app container JS, which is just basically a wrapper around the entire application. And this is just really all of the components that are part of the, uh, are part of the Tailwind component. And all it really does is it, you'll see it in a second, but all it does is, is, is render this nice sidebar and then give us a space where we can put our, our children in right here. And the children, of course, are going to be all of the different pages content. In this case, it's the list and the index. So why don't I go ahead and show this off? We also created a super um, quick logo um, using, um, what's it called? Kavana, I think. Right, what is this called again? This is, uh, this is the logo that we created. Um, and we're playing around with stuff. We're just kind of having fun here. Love to hear your feedback on this. Kind of, kind of going for this look of like a Swiss Army knife to be able to add other features to this as we, as we move on. And we're we're, we're constantly talking about different things we can add to this. Um, Canva, right? Canva is the service here. Super cool service to be able to just quickly create things. Um, this is the React Spinners project that we brought in to be able to do some really simple loading. But let's go ahead and start the project. So we have it here and here we go. So we have our login screen here and we have our, our way to create an account and we have a way to log in. So I have a, I have a test user here. So I'm going to log in as test and let's see. So bring us in. All right. So now you can see our interface looks a little different. Um, it doesn't just have this kind of three panel area here where we entered a contract address. Um, it takes us right to this create new contract listener, which we probably shouldn't do. We probably should go right to the list view. So if I click here, um, it's going to take us to the list view and you can see that skeleton loader in action there, which is pretty cool. Um, so this, I already have one listener set up. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this. So we have these little icons here and I'm just going to hit delete. It should remove it and boom. Now you can see here we have our default display that says, you don't have any listeners. Let's go ahead and create one. So I'm going to create a new listener. And now this screen we changed up a bit. Why don't I make it just really simple? And I'd like to iterate on this a bit. I'd love to hear some feedback. But um, let's go ahead and set up a listener for a, 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 a contract that has a lot of events firing. So I have this, the the, um, the tether contract here. Actually, let's look at, let's look at die, the die stable coin. Yeah, this looks like it's firing events pretty frequently. Ah, you know what? That's not really that frequent. Let's let's go back to this. Looks like it's yeah, 14 seconds ago. So let's go ahead and grab this one. And I'm gonna plug it in here. Hit next. We should have a little loader there. Now we're rendering everything in kind of this just top-down display, right? I think it looks pretty clean. Um, we could go ahead and select any of the events here. So in this case, we want to listen to the transfer event. And now we want to we want to have a URL we can actually post to. So we want to see this bad boy in action, right? So let's go ahead and use request bin, which is called pipe dream now. And we can create a super simple just webhook for us to be able to just see the data hit this webhook. So I'm going to go ahead and say create request bin. And this is going to give us a URL we can use which will then show us anything that hits this. Cool, so let's see if this works. I'm gonna plug this in here, and then I'm gonna click Start Listening. And now that should take us back to this list view, and you can see that we have this transfer event, we're listening on this contract, and it's going out and it's gonna to post to this URL. Awesome. So this is looking pretty good so far, and this kind of, you know, you can see now the how we've encompassed all of these different front end changes. I'm gonna go ahead and commit this to a 
clean front end branch on GitHub. So you can go ahead and see the code here. Uh, but now it's all set up. But now we need to actually start our back end. So I'm going to go ahead and I have an SSH connection already set up and I'm on our back end server. So this is just a Linux server that we've pulled down the event watcher D project. And now I'm just going to go ahead and run the index.js and this should go out and this is going to go ahead and read any listeners that are in the database, which it looks like it found two of them. And it has the subscription IDs that are returning. And boom, we've already hit one. So look at that. We just logged out an event. Let's go over to request bin and boom, they are coming in, baby. Look at that. So if we look at this, we could see the event should have our body. It's going to give us the block. And then here's the event. So we have the topics in two ways, indexed by an integer value and then indexed by what they actually are as more like a, like a hash value here. Um, so you can go ahead and, and index them either way. Awesome. So these are coming in hot right now. They are coming in hot because there are a lot of events firing in this contract. And you can see they're, they're coming in. So our listeners should be sitting there cooking. Awesome. So now if I go ahead and say, I want to set up another one. So let's go ahead and let's look at, um, what about like, uh, now CryptoPunks doesn't really fire events that much. Um, yeah, what's, what's another one we could do? Oh, the, um, the ETH deposit contract is one we want to take a look at. Let's see if this even comes up. ETH deposit contract. No, that's not it. Uh, Lighthouse is a project. So Lighthouse ETH, um, client. This is a, a client for ETH2 where they and they have this posted here. So this is the this is the contract that holds all of the Ethereum. This is the beacon deposit contract. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the address of this bad boy. Go over here and create a new listener. Plug it in there. And we only have one event on this bad boy, the deposit event. And I'm going to go ahead and grab. Where is the. Oh, where's the address for this? No, oh, it's right there. Yeah. There it is. I'm going to grab that and then we're going to go here, plug it in and start listening. And now we have two contract listeners and our back end should have detected that, which we probably want to delete this because it's uh, there are a lot of events firing here. But it does seem to be working. And the deposit address doesn't really look like it fires a lot of events here. So if we look here and we look at events 12 minutes ago. so. 13 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. So this is more in minutes than seconds as opposed to the uh, to the US, the, the other the other contract. But awesome. Okay, so we've already hit our limit here uh, with this. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And we're going to go ahead and remove the transfer here because that's a little much. But it looks like we're working. So we should also be able to log out here. That should work. All right, all right. Excellent. So I think at this point, we've we kind of have all of the features that we originally set out to develop with this product. There, there have been a couple of comments on YouTube uh, about some improvements. I'm looking forward to making those. I'm going to dive in and, and, and look at those in, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I'd like to make some improvements to this. I think there's there has been some feature requests for things like account watchers and I'm really interested in trying to develop that. That is a little bit different than doing contract watching. Um, we have to kind of look at each block and then search through each block for an account um, that we're watching. So there's a little bit more involved there. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and commit this to GitHub. I'm going to probably post this to some um, some host in the next week or so so that folks can go ahead and touch it and, and try to try to use it and find some bugs and, and stuff like that. 
might start some issues too on GitHub. So we can kind of transfer some of this work to GitHub and we could start to create some um, some workflows there to be able to, to improve this over time. But I'm super happy with how this came out so far. You know, we, we, we had a concept and we ran with it and we put it together and it's reality now. So in, you know, some time there, we put it together and it's working. So uh, any ideas, any comments, any issues that you could see here, please let me know. There are a bunch of improvements I'd like to make on the back end as well. Just the way that we're indexing the actual events, the way that we're instantiating the contracts, all that definitely needs to improve. Um, but we have a proof of concept and it's working. So uh, anybody watching along here, super thanks for, for, uh, for continuing to follow during this journey. Um, and let's keep building, baby. Thanks, guys. Bye.